I've been on a quest for the last two years to release my first commercial game, and it's called Dewdrop Dynasty. It's a more lighthearted metroidvania that has a focus on mystery and adventure without all the horribly depressing backstories that give you existential crises after you play the game. So think of the gameplay of Hollow Knight, but with mechanics from Ocarina of Time and the lovable world and characters from Paper Mario. Got it? And I know this might sound cheesy, cliche, or even like a title from a Bargy video, but I used to daydream and imagine creating my first commercial game as a kid, and it's weird to think that 13 years later that I'm closer to that goal than ever before. Now today I wanted to cover the visual overhaul that I did for the game to help make the game look better. It sounds really stupid, but if I've learned anything from game dev or just marketing in general, it's that people definitely judge a book by its cover. And in this case, your graphics? I don't know. And back when I released the demo for the game, I got a lot of comments saying that the game just needed a visual update. And one person even said, and I quote, this is the most generic Metroidvania I've ever seen. And after taking some time away and looking back at it, I honestly have no idea. No, they're totally right. So I decided to spend around two weeks to go back and overhaul Tumbleweed and see how I can make each room and area feel unique. Also, don't worry, this desert location isn't the only area of the game. It's just the first area. So that's why it has the most polish. Most locations right now in the game look like this. Not, not as cute, right? But before we dive too deep, I have another huge problem. You see, there's this little obscure indie game coming out soon. Eh, you've probably never heard of it. It's called Silk Song, And somehow, it's one of the most wishlisted games on Steam. I know, right? What, I mean, who, what is this game? Anywho, I reached out to the devs, and Team Cherry agreed that if I get more wishlist than them, that they'll eat their shoe. I don't even know how you do that. Okay, so maybe they didn't agree to it and maybe they're totally avoiding my calls, but hey, the challenge still remains. So please wishlist and follow Dewdrop Dynasty on Steam and help me win this battle. Now, if you're making a Metroidvania or you're just doing level design, I really encourage you to block out the areas first, even if they look rough like this, because this made it 10 times easier to come back and do a more final art pass. I started off by making the tiles more rounded and more angular, so you had more ceiling room and you weren't hitting your head on weird corners and stuff. And I feel like this change alone really improved the look of the game and it made it feel less Minecrafty. After that, I played around with the background. Before it was kind of just black and there was some parallax, but it was really hard to see. This fix wasn't too hard. All I did was just make it a more of a purple color so it stood out and you could see it. And then I also added more background tiles like these cave walls and stuff that really helped sell the parallax. It just makes the world feel more alive and more 3D, which is really cool. And who knows, I might even come back and push this even more. After that, I knew I wanted to separate the different parts of Tumbleweed by changing the color of the background. So the further down you go, it's more blue and it's misty and the places with more vegetation have a green background and so forth. I think it just breaks up the background enough so it feels like you're in a new location even though the tile sets haven't really changed. And speaking of tile sets, I also went back and added a ton of new tile sets. You'll see that there's major props, there's weird oil rigs, there's bones, lots of bones, even more bones. There's a giant skull. What's that all about? Obviously, all these things have a significant role to the game's lore, uh, so that's all I'll say for now. And just with these changes alone, the game just feels so much bigger and the world feels more alive and unique. I mean, just look at this side-by-side -side comparison. It, it, it almost doesn't even feel like the same game. It's, it's such a major improvement. And speaking of new improvements, I started working on a boss fight. This guy is called Bonsai Beetle, and his whole gimmick is he likes TNT. Lots and lots of TNT. So I played around with different abilities, him throwing TNT sticks, him aiming at you, jumping around, all sorts of crazy things. I also ended up creating this camera system when you go into a boss area, it kind of zooms out and locks your camera in place so you can fight and see what's happening. I don't know if I like that idea or if I just want to keep it so your camera's free. We'll see. It's just something to play around with. I also created these new tumbleweed characters because there's nothing more annoying than a bouncing enemy, especially during a boss fight. And they work. Trust me. They tick me off. And also, if you watched last video, you heard me mention about ammo links, and well, we need to talk about them. So I was playing around with the whole idea that you have ammo links, and bosses could have ammo links, and you can swap them out and have different abilities. But the more I played with it, the more I realized that it just wasn't that interesting, and it just was a lot of extra work for not a lot of extra fun. So you'll see here, I tried to make an ammo link for Bonsai Beetle, but most likely this won't be in the game, or if it is, it might just be a secret. Who knows? A couple other graphic overhauls I did were improved 
improving the particle effects on your gun. I just want to make them feel super juicy. I even made this dummy enemy that you can test it out on and I might even add him in the game so you can see how much damage your weapon is doing or something like that so you can test around with new weapons as you unlock them. This also led me to do a complete overhaul of the UI system and the options and the mini map and stuff. I think it reads so much better. There's more room for information on there and it's just it's just better. It's just better in general. I also was playing around with the file system and the difficulty setting and what that would look like and my thought is that the file setting would be a flower and when your difficulty would be that flower that you choose. So you get the sleepy flower, you get the regular flower, you get the ripped flower who's you know you know he's working out or something. Also remember earlier I said we aren't just working on tumbleweed. Yeah well I've been working on base tiles for other locations as well but this is where I decided to put a pause on the graphic overhaul. This is because building out the map and the world for Dewdrop is way more important right now than doing the visuals for every location. Now that I feel like I have a pretty good idea for the visual style, my focus has just been blocking out and building out all the rooms in the map as quickly as possible. I have to say, I've got a lot of progress done so far, it just doesn't look that Twitter worthy right now, if you know what I mean. But let me know what you think of the new visual improvements. I could spend so much time on it, and honestly, it's my favorite part of game development, but there'll be plenty of time for that after I've done all the base work. And I'm getting close, guys. I'm getting close. Oh, and by the way, I finally just launched my own website and it's called goodgets.fun. I basically just wanted to create a centralized hub for all my stuff so you can find FAQ stuff, pictures of me awkwardly holding awards, and of course I'll be putting my games up there eventually as well. I have some really fun plans for the website like free resources and maybe even a couple secrets. So make sure to check it out and let me know what you think. Anywho, that's it for me. Go wishlist Dewdrop on Steam and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.